cogent advice and inspiration from real self-made millionaires. Welcome to The Eventual Millionaire with your host, Jamie Masters. Welcome to Eventual Millionaire. I'm Jamie Masters. And today on the show, I've already been laughing so much. He's thrown me off a few times already. We have John Dwyer. He runs the Institute of Wow.com. He's worked with amazing, huge brands like McDonald's. He's even convinced Jerry Seinfeld to work with a tiny little bank. How the heck did you do that? Thanks so much for coming on the show today. I really appreciate it. My pleasure, Jamie. Nice to be here. So, (laughs) like I said, he threw me off. Nobody ever throws me off at the beginning. I'm very impressed so far. Uh, I even already have a nickname for him, which I will not share. No, I'm kidding. (laughs) So thank you so much. Please tell me, in general, um, why marketing of WOW makes that much of a difference comparatively to regular marketing, because it sounds a little like a shtick. It does, doesn't it? It does indeed. And... um... Jamie, look, any business owner uh, these days is up against about 3,000 messages a day that we're all exposed to. And so in the old days when you just had your three TV networks and you had your local radio stations and things like that, you probably could find it a lot easier to cut through the clutter. But in this day that we live, day and age we live in now with uh, social media and with all the other interruptions that we have, then, you know, depending upon who you want to believe, we're apparently exposed to, you know, 3,000, 4,000 messages a day. So my view is that if you go down the conventional path of building your brand and then they will come, um, you could be, you know, on a senior's pension by the time that, you know, you start to get people through the door. And my view is that that's fine for Coca-Cola and McDonald's and all those big brands to actually sponsor the Olympics and build their brand and all that sort of thing. But for most small businesses, and I mean small businesses that are doing hundreds of thousands of dollars up to maybe $50 million, um, they need to put food on the table tomorrow night. And uh, this wow factor marketing technique that I show people is all about direct response marketing, but with some pixie dust on top. Oh, I like pixie dust. And I really appreciate you saying that too, because I remember some of my friends worked for Coca-Cola and they were going after impressions and branding. And I was like that. And and we think as small business owners, we need tons of that. But normally we don't for sales, at least in- incrementally, which is what we're looking for right now. How do we get it right now? So please enlighten us with the pixie dust, how we can really step through, especially in this online market, which is insane. How can we really stand out? Yeah, look, um, first of all, let me say to anyone who says, oh, look, you know, branding is the you know, is the absolute um, ultimate. I agree with you. Absolutely. I mean, we buy Kellogg's because it's Kellogg. We buy Coke because it's Coke and BMW because it's BMW. It's just that if you don't fall into that category where you've got a marketing department of 15 or 20 or 30 people and you've got $20 million a year to spend on marketing, then um, it's just not going to work for you. You won't be able to break through all that clutter out there just with branding. Um, and so what I say is that branding becomes irrelevant if you're not selling anything. And uh, this particular style of marketing has five components to it. And, and I'll, you know, I'll touch on those if you like. But the, the thing is, is that um, direct response marketing allows you to test Facebook today, to test Instagram today, and to test a local letterbox brochure even today and know tomorrow whether it's working. And branding, of course, um, should go along with that when you are actually developing direct response marketing, then you should bring your brand along with it. I'll, I'll give you an example. Um, a bank here in Australia was the one that I got Jerry Seinfeld to um, to, to promote. Um, even before Jerry came along, um, I said to that bank, what was your acquisition tool? And they said, for home loans. And they said, oh, 1% honeymoon rate. I went, oh, please. I mean, every other bank has a 1% honeymoon rate. There's nothing different about that. And they said, well, what do you suggest? I said, well, why don't you actually give that 1% honeymoon rate, which on $100,000 is $1,000 for the first year they were giving back to the people. Why don't you give that to a wholesale uh, vacation company and then give away a free vacation with every home loan? And so that's what they did. They, If it was a $200,000 loan, then of course the budget that they would have had for a, a honeymoon rate would be two grand. They gave that $2,000 to the holiday vacation company and they'd get a three or $4,000 value holiday because it was a wholesale company. Um, so we came on TV, we came online, we came on newspapers and said, get a home loan from this particular bank and you'll get a free vacation. Guess what? We never mentioned an interest rate for 11 years. Not for 11 years did we ever, ever mention a price. And in the first three months of giving away a free vacation with the home loan, they tripled their home loans. And then within two years, they quadrupled their home loans. And this idiot that you're talking to charged the consultancy fee instead of a percentage. <laughs> 
lesson learned, right? So <laughs> I was just about to call you a genius, but I'm glad that you just called yourself an idiot right before I was I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. I remember my wife saying to me, Jamie, at the time, because it just took off like crazy. And then when we put Seinfeld on top of that, it was a wow factor on top of a wow factor. It went nuts again. I remember my wife said to me, look, you've been working very hard. We, you know, maybe Fiji um, and Fiji and Islands for a holiday. I said, uh, and I was had a head this big at that stage. I thought I was, you know, the guy upstairs. I said, uh, forget the holiday, we'll just buy the island, you know. <laughs> and I think I think God was watching and made sure that uh, I was brought down uh, a peg or two. Smart and this yeah. big, <laughs> I was hoping the bank would give me a percentage, but it never worked out that way. Ouch, ouch, that hurts. That's, a, that's painful. Okay, lesson learned. I'm sure that didn't happen again later for you. Good old entrepreneurs. We learn our lessons the hard way sometimes, right? Uh, so you tell me, because everybody that's listening, I was about to call you, a, I was like, if we can't have you, the genius, tell us what our wow factor should be, how do we try and figure it out for ourselves? Okay, there's a thing called the iPhone, and of course it looks like this. I'm holding it up to the camera, and uh, they don't need my help so much. And the reason they don't is because they have an organic wow factor. So that that particular product um, or service uh, is only one of a kind. And I know you might say Samsung and everyone else is caught up these days, but the, the point I'm trying to make is if you've got the Rubik's Cube, there's no need for a wow factor. It's a wow factor by itself. There's an organic wow factor inside there. But if you are marketing a wheelbarrow and you think you're going to beat uh, Walmart, then your wheelbarrow better light up in the dark because you're not going to beat them on price. They will just beat you every single time. So my view is why if you are a challenger brand, and most of us are, if you're not the Coca-Cola of the industry, you're a challenger brand, why take on the big guys on price when you're never going to win? Yeah. So why even sit down at the kitchen table tonight with your husband or your wife and map out a marketing plan that's based on price discounting yeah. when in fact that's not sustainable? So my view is, is that what you need to do is you need to consider what McDonald's have done very successfully for about four decades, and that is come up with a Happy Meal toy. Come up with a wow factor that's what I would call an artificial wow factor. Now, get a home loan, get a free vacation. That's got nothing at all to do with a home loan, but that's an artificial wow factor. Why? Because their home loan with money is the same as the money from the Wells Fargo Bank or any other bank. And so therefore, when I teach people to develop a wow factor for their business, an artificial one, then I say, look, I've got six children, they're 18 to late 20s these days, but at one stage, my wife and myself, we were like the Brady Bunch. We had six under 12, six children under 12. That Tarago van was very noisy. And I must have throughout that period spent $6 billion on Happy Meals, and it had nothing to do with the hamburger. Yep. <laughs> So it's like Tom's Shoes has like their wow factor where they gave a, a pair of shoes back. What's, what, give me some example. What can we have to pick from? Because it makes sense to hear their things and it's way different for us to look at, okay, I'm a coaching business that's online or whatever the pieces are. How do we make a wow factor that's new and different and actually somebody cares about? Okay, okay. I'll, I'll give you some examples. Um, a turf farm, as in selling grass for your front yard or your backyard. Okay, so a turf farm. I'm just conscious of the Aussie accent. So when I say turf farm, I just want to make sure you know what I'm talking about. Noted. Um, he had about six miles worth of turf when he came into my coaching program. And uh, he said, look, I've, I've just bought this big turf farm. Uh, and he said, unfortunately, the building boom at that time, this was a few years ago, wasn't what I thought it was going to be. So I'm stuck with a lot of this turf. And I've got to turn it over so that I can replant for the next season. And I said, well, who's your target audience? He said, landscapers, because a landscaper will actually order two or three homes worth of turf, whereas, you know, if it was mum and dad wanting to replace the grass on the front yard, then you know, they're very hard to find. And I said, fine, what do you think landscapers like as a wow factor? And he said, uh, pricing. He said, I'm continually dropping my prices all the time. And he said, it's just a nightmare. I'm losing margin because every turf farm's got the same grass. I said, it's a good one. In that case, why don't we actually offer them some premium beer? Now, in Australia, we have a premium beer, which is the upmarket beer called Crown Lager. And this is just, you know, it's a beer that you would get if you went to the Hilton Hotel. Now, these landscapers would normally drink normal beer, and uh, you have to be wearing a coat and maybe a tie to, to drink Crown Lager. So we sent out uh, email uh, and snail mail an invitation that for every home's worth of grass that they uh, bought from this turf farm, which is about 500 square yards, they would get a carton of Crown Lager. He rang me up six days into the promotion after only sending out the email and the letter to 250 of the 500 landscapers that we rented a list from. Mm -hmm. uh, and he said, I've got a problem. I've run out of grass. And uh, he said, I'm actually, I'm actually sourcing turf from other turf farms to keep up with the demand for the beer. 
Over a case of beer. Okay. Uh, I Thank love you. this, and I love how human beings, we can be <laughs> persuaded, persuaded by so little, which is great. Uh, let me ask you this. One of my clients actually uh, has the opportunity to market wedding dresses. So they're overstock. She's right now going through a marketing plan to try and she's not a wedding dress person. She does a total other company. This is sort of like a side thing. How would you market a wow factor for wedding dresses? I'm totally putting you on the spot, but I want you to like walk us through what it would be to try and figure that piece out. Okay. First of all, what I say to a client is, would you be prepared to give up a 10% of your sale price if we could double your business? And the answer always in a heartbeat is yes. Um, and yet in the world of Groupon that we live in these days, if you were a hairdressing salon or you promoted you know, wedding dresses and you put a sign outside your business online or offline that said 10% discount, you know nobody would come in. Groupon give you 50% for God's sake. Yep. And so therefore I say, right, well, let's just work on 10%. So if you're selling something for $2,000, you'd be willing to give up $200 towards a wow factor. And they always say yes. And so the question I would ask you, Jamie, or that lady uh, who owns the business is, what would the average sale price for a wedding dress be, to be so that I can think of a wow factor that would, would be 10% of that? Good question. So I have no idea. I've you don't? You don't? Wedding oh, dress. Well, so I haven't talked to her about this, but I'm assuming like, I'd say like a thousand bucks, I'd assume. Oh, is this cost yeah. or not cost? Is this sale price or no, cost? No, 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 sale price. Sale price. Okay. And I think, look, I'm a, I'm a blokey bloke, so what would I know about wedding dresses? But I think it might be north of that. I think you might find there's quite a few ladies out there that spend much, much oh, more than Oh, I'm sure. Thousand. I'm not one of, yes, I'm not one of the market. So, yes, I totally understand. It could be two, it could be 10, but I don't know. But I'd yeah, say, I'd say let's say 1,000 or 2,000, so that way we know, because okay. they're discounted ones, I think. Okay, dokie. Okay. So, therefore, what I would do is that I would do something like um, we have a – a hotel here on the Gold Coast. I live on the Gold Coast in Australia, which is like the Orlando of uh, of America, where it's all the theme parks and the beaches and things like that, right? And there is a six-star hotel here called the Palazzo Versace. It's the Italian brand, and it is like it's six-star. It marble everywhere, and uh, you, if you you know know the right people, can uh, sometimes get the rooms there that are normally six hundred dollars a night. Um, for a good rate if you actually play the, your cards the right way. Mm -hmm. And so often when I've got something like this, which is an experiential product, a wedding dress is there for the one, and no, well, maybe more than one these days, but anyway, <laughs> the one occasion, right? Um, and so therefore it's going to be enhancing the experience for that lady getting married. What I would suggest is that you would actually uh, enhance further that experience by saying you get your wedding dress from me, and even when you come back from your honeymoon, because obviously we don't try and get involved in organising someone's honeymoon, that's their own personal thing. But when you come back from your honeymoon, you and your husband will stay one incredible night at the Palazzo Versace. You'll have a beautiful dinner, da-da-da-da-da, uh, you'll be you know, pampered, uh, you'll have chocolates on the bed, the whole thing. And this exclusive hotel, you won't get that from any other wedding dress company. Um, so it's it's an example of the, uh, you know, of the tip of my head. But the thing is, is that it's all about actually working out what would a 10% discount normally be and transferring that across to a wow factor. And how good negotiating you are with getting the sweet spot of, of trying to get something really freaking amazing to give to it. Is it always like a package thing? Is it always, is that what works best? Like, oh, when this happens, then this, you get this? Uh, yeah, yes, it is. Uh, my view is there's no one in Australia, at least, that would have run more sweepstake contests than me. Uh, okay, I've done every scratch bingo game for the newspapers. I've done all the McDonald's scratch games and, you know, I've, I've done all of those sorts of things and uh, and made a few dollars out of it over the years. Um, but I would recommend to anyone now, never, ever run a contest. Never, ever run a contest. You're talking to someone who made their career out of, you know, creating contests um, but the reason I say never run a contest is because if you asked any of your friends, Jamie, how many times was their purchase decision in the supermarket or anywhere else influenced by a contest, they'd say never, never. Um, just as I've never met a human being that's bought anything off the side of a bus, anything off the back of a taxi. Right. I've never met, <laughs> yeah, I've, never, I've, I've never, met, never met a human that's bought anything on the electronic signs that run around the NFL games a weekend, and yet there's tens of millions of dollars being wasted on that every weekend. So what I say to people is that if you are going to um, have a wow factor, just simply work out 10% of what your sale price is and then look for something that you can provide to them that will take their eyes, guess what, off the price. So 10% discount will keep their eyes on the price, so will 50% discount. But if you actually put a toy in the bottom of the Kellogg's breakfast cereal, 
then price doesn't come into the equation. No kidding. The kids will just bug the crap out of you for the crappy cereal because the healthy ones don't have the toy. Such a pain. Why don't <laughs> the healthy ones have the toy? Come on. They should just do oh, that. that that whole living longer thing, it's all I've up. <laughs> right? Give them the sugar. Uh, then I have to deal with them. Uh, you have a ton of children, so you know what that's yeah, like. Yes, so I've had to deal with quite a few of them. Yeah. Uh, so, so tell me, how can more of an online business that's not necessarily a product type? So like you're a coaching consultant business in general. What do you give? Do you give something as a wow? And you tell me a little bit more about how you market something that's a little more intangible, like a service. Yeah, I can. I can. Um, Okay, and you're talking B2B or both B2B and B2C? I would love to have examples of both if you don't mind. <laughs> yeah, okay, thank you. Um, okay, so in my own instance, you know, I, uh, you know, the people who are listening to this program, um, or watching the program, I should say, would probably be very familiar with the Dan Kennedys of this world and the Ryan Dyess's and the Frank Kearns and the Joe Polishes and all those cool kids at lunchtime. Um, so and uh, I've... I've been a member of all their clubs and so forth, and uh, and I was a consultant up until about four years ago. And at the you know, latter end of our career, I said to my wife, "Look, I've got all this IP that I've been giving all these big companies, and I got a bit sick of you know dealing with boardroom um, semantics." And so I said, "Look, why don't we cut this IP that I've got intellectual property up into bite-sized pieces and make it available to the smaller businesses?" And I had no clue uh, what it was all about when it came to you know holding seminars and all those sorts of things. And so therefore, that's why I got into the environment where I learned from the Dan Kennedys and the Joe Polishes and I had to do all this sort of stuff. Um, as I said to you, I think, Jamie, before we kicked off, because just my luck four years ago when I decided to swap over to providing all my services to smaller businesses and have a seminar style, you know, uh, business model, the seminar started going south. <laughs> and uh, this thing called the internet was alive and well. And so therefore, why would you jump on a plane and go all the way interstate to go to a seminar when you can watch it on a webinar? So anyway, that was an interesting learning curve. But what we do is that um, we actually guarantee that when somebody comes to our event, they will walk away with this five-step system, whether they decide to become part of our environment or not. And over the time that we've been doing this now, and I think we're okay at it now, uh, we've collected testimonial after testimonial after testimonial, video and otherwise. And so we find it very easy now to actually create um, an organic wow factor, not an artificial one. So nobody comes into our seminars with the chances to win something. Mm -hmm. We actually guarantee them the wow factor that they will leave with a marketing system that they can join the dots with, regardless of whether they do anything more with me. And the reason we are able to do that is because we always make sure that nobody leaves that room on the day that they're there without walking in front of the camera and saying, what was it that they got out of that function? And you know what, Jamie, the crazy part about it is, is that so many people in the service industry have got this unbelievable opportunity these days with their iPhones to capture all of those wow factor comments, mm. but hardly anyone does it. And the other wow, the other thing that is crazy in the world that we live in, if I was working for McDonald's in America today, if I was to take over their business, I would sack their marketing manager within five minutes. Because do you know that today you have 27 and a half million people go through McDonald's and McDonald's have no clue who any one of them is? Wow, really? No, no, even, uh, yeah, that's a very valid point. Wow. Huh. Ooh, that's going to suck know, later on. Not, yep. They're not, they're not the only ones. Walmart have no yep. clue who anyone is. Um, you can go through any of the you know, big franchise chains who you would think would be smart marketers, yep. and they are on the surface. They are on the surface, but none of them collect data. And uh, the reason that I've just gone off track a little bit there is because I think one of the things, and I'll give you the five-step system in a second if you're interested in that, but one of the things that you need if you're going to have a wow factor and if you're going to stimulate repetitive trade is you need data. And the crazy part about it is that 90% of websites don't have uh, any free report or free download to collect data. Mm. You and I would because we're in the game, but many, no, most people don't. And the other thing is, is that in the offline world, it's the same thing. You can go into any restaurant in America tonight, you can spend $200 and they'll let you leave without taking any data. Ah, and data is, yes, in the future, that's all that it's going to be about. And they're going to be, they're going to have the same issues that you had when you were like, oh, I should have done it, right? Yeah. Uh, except theirs would be a lot more painful, I think, uh, on a wide scale. So tell me, how is it enough to have a wow factor with like, the testimonials? And and in general, when, you're, when you've got that wow of the people really, really excited, how do you ask them the right questions for that? Because there's a lot of people online that, have, that are coach consultants that have, I have a lot of testimonials, right? Um, we've done a lot of stuff like that. How do we make them be our wow factor? 
Look, I know that in the United States, we don't have this rule in Australia, but in the United States, um, you know, Frank Kern has to say that hardly anyone that comes onto his program will make any money. He has to say that. He says he says that. And, uh, and I know that there's a rule whereby you have to say that, you know, 98% of people that come onto this program will not do anything. And it's not Frank's fault. He's got great product and great service. But the fact is, is that most people just don't roll their sleeves up. You know that. I know that. Um, and regardless of the fact that we don't have that ruling, if I had to say that in Australia, I'd say it gladly because the point is you're never going to join the gym and develop muscles if you don't go every week. You know, that's the way it is. Um, but what we do is that we give an extraordinary level of proof that we are very different from what they might perceive the normal seminar person is because let's face it the industry is fraught with you know who's and uh you know but basically you know people who fake it till they make it and so the first thing i say when i go onto a stage or i speak at any presentation is that i'm not a seminar speaker i absolutely make that clear so i say look i've come from the corporate world the only reason i'm doing this is because selling once to many hmm, seems like a pretty smart move okay <laughs> And then I teach them to replicate that because whether it's webinars or podcasts or whatever it might be, sell once to many makes a lot of sense. Tupperware have been making some money out of that over the years. So the thing that I do when I'm talking to any of these businesses and they're asking me, well, how do we develop a wow factor? I ask them to go through a five-step system. Number one, who's their most profitable customer? Mm. And then all you do is basically look for more people who look like him. Pretty simple, okay? Not our oh, women. No, no, no. We want to know women. Is it 35 through to 54? They drive a certain car. They shop at this thing and they have an annual in income of whatever and they've got 2.3 children. So it's all about drilling down to your most profitable customer. Number two, creating a wow factor to take their eyes off the price. Number three, um, use a problem solution formula, which the Neurofan company does very well. Uh, you've got a headache, take a tablet, it's gone within 15 minutes. Uh, no longer do they tell us what's in the tablet. We don't care. You can put whatever you want in there. Placebo the effect. Gone. Yeah, exactly. It works now. Yeah, okay. <sighs> and number four of the five points is fix your woeful website because most people have an absolute disgusting, awful website. Um, and, of course, you know, most of them, um, if you said to them what was the most important page on a magazine, they'll tell you the front page. And then you say, well, why do you have the ugliest homepage in the world for your website? Why, why is that the case? If you know that the website is your director of first impressions, you better have a good front page. And the fifth component of the system that we have is uh, build repetitive trade. And the only way you can build repetitive trade is to collect data in the first place. And nobody collects data in the first place. That's the crazy part about it. Yeah, most so thankfully we I live in a world of most of my friends that actually do because we're in the game like you said we're like okay we've been there done that a lot of people are figuring out lead magnets and and, and this is why all those guys that you mentioned have job like make a ridiculous amount of money because nobody really gets this industry right now. Um so oh. when we're going through and this is the other uh, question that I have on your five steps. When Yes, of course we need to know who the number one most profitable is. When we're trying to figure out what that wow factor how do you, especially here in the States or on the internet, I guess I should say in general, how do we try and make the, the, the videos or whatever it is more different, more different, differenter, key, key, key differentiator wise than everybody else? So like for me, I talk about money and I feel like it's not necessarily, everybody does the same thing, right? Oh, more time, more money, more happiness. Those are the three things that everybody specifically wants. But there's 17,000 systems that could get you those same three things. So how do we get them to take the eye off the, the price? You know what I mean? To try and sell them yeah. when there's literally, you could hire me, you could hire you, you could hire Ryan Dice, you could hire a bazillion people for the same quote unquote cost with lots and lots of really amazing pieces, right? Testimonies. Look, I, um, I'd like to think the reason we do okay is because we're just down to earth. Uh, mm -hmm. Whereas most of the coaches and the advisors out there are anything but down to earth. Yeah. Okay. They'll okay. show you all, they'll show you all the selfies. <laughs> So, I mean, I, I actually did work with Seinfeld for three years and I've got lots of evidence of that. It's, I didn't run up to him and do a selfie because I spoke on the same stage as him. And so therefore, basically in Australia, I don't know whether you have the same term, uh, they're wankers. That's what we call <laughs> We call them dickheads or wankers, okay? Um, and that's why the first thing I do when I come onto a podcast like that this or sense. a webinar, yeah. I say, look, I'm not a, I'm not a seminar speaker because uh, – 
uh, I make sure that they understand that this is not a quick rich scheme. I mean, there are many of my clients that get uh, a, a, an incredible result virtually overnight, like within weeks, because they were so silly before, it was pretty easy to trick up their business. <laughs> but nonetheless, it's not one of these quick rich schemes where, you know, Google are going to slap you. Um, and that's where I think that from an advisor point of view, if you are a consultant or you're an advisor, for goodness sake, get rid of all that rubbish about, look, um, you're going to spend more time with your family, we're going to hug each other, you get hard nipples, we're going to do a conga line, we've got all this BS. Uh-huh. Uh, I, I tell everyone when they come into our seminar, you will not be hugging anyone and you will not be touching anyone, there'll be no conga lines, you're just going to walk out of here with a marketing system that can absolutely turn your business into dynamite, but trust me, uh, this is not going to be a personal development seminar where you hug people. Um, we're sort of, I, I promote myself, for, I love Anthony Robbins, I think he's fantastic. I just don't like all the wannabe Anthony Robbins. <laughs> Everybody, exactly. Though I do want to hug everyone, but other, but me hug them. They don't have to hug each other. Uh, Tony Robbins, that was weird. Everybody wanted to hug yeah. me with all these random people I just met. I'm like, I don't know, I'm not okay with this. Yeah. Yeah, okay. and you, 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 you've got it. And look, the thing is, is that there is a time and place for everything. And I know that you know, if you're a personal developer, coach you're looking for people with anxiety and depression because that's you know, happy days um we're just not into that we, what we say is that listen um you know um number one you will never make money out of poor people and so therefore if you are a wellness coach and you're going down the path of just helping the world anyone whether they've got money or not uh then good luck um i'm not I, i'm a christian i always absolutely believe that we should look after those who are less fortunate than ourselves but the best way i can do that is to make money out of richer people yeah. and then give that money like robin hood did to the poorer people um i have a lot of people come into my environment and they go oh look they're a one-man band and they'll say look you know we're, we're out there to help everyone i go well please either put up with my sarcasm or leave because your feelings are going to be hurt, right? You can't help everyone. Help people with money and then you can give some of the money you make from them to the poor people. Uh, so I just need to highlight that. Anybody that's listening right now, think of who you're marketing to at the moment. And it's so funny and so easy for us to say because we'll look at it and we'll be like, Why? well, they're not paying you. Well, yeah, because they have no money. And it's so logical when you're looking at yep. it from the outside. From, but the hard thing is that they're also sold the dream where they're like, doesn't matter. You can, you can make a business out of anything. Anybody will buy, right? And then they go and you run the numbers because I'm a data freak, right? You run the numbers, you're like, you need this many people to pay you this much money. Do you know how hard that is online to get that many people on your email list and then have open rates? Yep. Even if you were stellar at everything, you wouldn't make very much, you know? And so... <laughs> And, and Jamie, you're right because you know there's so many of these people that go to these sorts of events, and uh, they hear the speaker up the front, of course, who's showing all of the beautiful slides of the yeah. castles that he owns in Scotland, and they always have a Miss World wife. Um, I don't know where how that works that, out. I do. I mean, I have a yeah. I have a- <laughs> <laughs> but most of these male seminar speakers are ugly, but they've got the Miss World wife. I don't know how that works out. Yeah. Um, I was doing one in um, Dubai. Uh, in the Arab Emirates uh, uh, about oh, 18 months ago. And I don't do many of these multi-speaker things because who wants to be in a gladiator pit, for God's sake, you know? Um, uh, so therefore, anyway, I was, I was sitting behind the stage and the guy that had just been out on stage in front of all of these people had just been showing his Miss World Wife and the how, Maseratis and all the rubbish. And uh, he's having a coffee with me and he said, oh, J- I get JD, John DeWire, I get JD. He said, JD, how's everything going for you? I said, not bad, uh, okay. And he said, yeah, not real good for me. He said, I'm down to my last $21,000. And I went, and he's about my vintage, by the way, so he's not a young kid. And I said, oh, why? He goes, oh, I've just been through the third wife and um, and things are real tough and blah, blah, blah. He gave me the, the whole horror story. He had just been out on stage 10 minutes earlier telling everyone that he was a multi-gazillionaire. And that's the thing that really upsets me because I, I think we make a dollar because we're just down to earth. I loved that rant. I thought that was absolutely amazing. And, and I... F- I'm so thankful now that we have the internet that can really start to spread the message of people that actually have authenticity. Like my friend, Pat Flynn, who has a a site called Smart Passive Income. Everyone's like, we just love him as a human. We want to go to his site because he, he, we care about him as a human instead of the, I will deliver you every flashy piece of gold, whatever it is that you want in your life. Because as we know, unfortunately, behind the scenes, a lot of it's not true. And we have to sort of, yeah, go ahead. But you're right, Jamie. I mean, think, I think like we have in our environment today, uh, sorry, tomorrow I have a two-day um, masterclass workshop. So the people who come onto our thing, I mean, everybody's got a masterclass. We call it the masterclass, the marketing masterclass. So then when they join three times a year, 
we have these two-day events and uh, they're anything but a hug fest. Um, they're lots of sarcasm, lots of fun, lots of wit, but lots and lots of good content. And uh, uh, I know what will happen at the end of tomorrow afternoon, the first of the two days, because it happens every time, is that I'll get one or two of my members will come up to me and uh, just to take the, you know, what out of me, will go, oh, I didn't enjoy today, JD. And I'll go, oh, okay, here we go. Why, what was wrong? And they'll go, you never insulted me. <laughs> and that's what I say. Well, stick around for another five minutes. Um, they want an environment. Every business owner wants to make more sales. And so therefore, you know, if you can help them do that with a proven system, of course, they're going to be interested. But they also want to be enter trained, not just trained. And the way I think about things is that, you know, um, uh, I just overload them with case study after case study after case study. And that means then that they know I haven't just been to the United States last week and went to a Facebook seminar, grabbed all the notes and came back and became a Facebook expert. Right. Okay. Exactly. And yep. it's tough because there is the whole like when you're new, you're trying to learn stuff. I just I just like people saying, hey, I'm new. Just so you know, I'll give you what I can. <laughs> right. It's just, you know, transparency yeah. and honesty is kind of important nowadays. That's my own thing. Okay. So tell me more and about Jane, and Jane, yeah, it. it James, just before we go on to the other numbers, can I ask you, in your environment, the people that you're dealing with, you have a lot of um, service industry people. So they would be coaches and they would be advisors. They might be chiropractors or doctors and dentists. Is that sort of, do you have a lot of those within your, those, your environment? Yes. Yep. Okay. Definitely. Yep. Um, I mean, there's definitely a subset of, of a product base, but in and those there's a ton of like Amazon sellers because that's a trend right now. Um, but a lot of them are like marketing firms and or um, sort of in the service space just in general, landscape or all sorts of stuff. So yep. when we're looking at the problem, the number three, the problem solution formula, can you explain that a little bit more? I get the idea, but what are we trying to do on that step? Good, no, very good question. Um, yeah, problem solution is um, is a stimulus, uh, an emotional stimulus that um, not many businesses use. And by the way, and Dan Kennedy will probably have preached this quite a number of times, um, less than 5% of all businesses in the world use direct response marketing. Um, the, the crazy, crazy thing is, and you've only got to scroll through your newsfeed on Facebook and see all the wasted money on sponsored ads, um, most of them are providing um, advertising marketing uh, in front of their target audience that uh, doesn't have any of these well factor techniques and doesn't even have a call to action. Um, so it's just crazy the amount of money that's been wasted. Um, my view with the problem solution thing is have a look at what any of the weight loss companies are doing, uh, all the headache tablet companies, and you'll see that they're going through uh, a five uh, steps. I hate to give you another five step system. Oh God, I sound like a seminar speaker. Um, <laughs> but but the emotional direct response formula is A, give them your their problem, okay? Highlight their problem to them, are you overweight? Then the second part of that is uh, aggravate that problem. So you say, well, look, spring is just around the corner and do you want to look good in your swimsuit? So you aggravate the fact that they're overweight. Number three, then what you do is uh, actually provide, um, uh, give me a second, uh, the solution. You provide the solution. And that is go on my Jenny Craig weight loss program and you will look like you know, Elle McPherson or one of the supermodels within four weeks. And then you show a photo of the supermodel. And then number four is provide proof. And that's what we call before and after. Um, or if you don't mind me being a little crass, uh, it's what we call in the advertising business to gold. Okay. So therefore, the fourth the fourth component is providing proof whereby you show the before and after photo. Simple as that. Um, was not healthy, not looking real well, overweight. And then within four weeks, she looks like um, Elle McPherson. And if she doesn't, then just show a photo of Elle McPherson. Right. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm joking. <laughs> I, you're not um, supposed okay. to, exactly. But there are crazy people out there. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> And then number five is a call to action, which is go to jennycraig.com or whatever it may be. And if you think about that holiday or the free vacation with the home loan, we did exactly that with all the holiday ads, uh, with all the home loan ads, I'm sorry. We would just say, look, are you with a bank at the moment and they're not treating you very well? Yes, I am. Number two, we'd aggravate that by saying, well, do you know what? A bank is charging you all those fees and charges because they have shareholders and they need to give a dividend. Uh, we're mutual because we're a building society. So, you know, basically all the funds that we make go back into helping you. Number three, if you swap your home loan from that nasty bank to the nice building society, you get a free vacation. Heavenly music, white doves, okay? And then number four, uh, we basically tell them, you know, uh, what uh, we show them proof and it would be a husband and wife who said, I used to have my home loan at this bank. They didn't know my name. They treated me like a number. When we swapped across to the Greater Building Society, not only did they treat us better, but we got a free holiday to Hawaii. And then number five, if you're interested in doing the same as these people, then go to greater.com. And you know what? It's as simple as that. If you follow that procedure, you just watch what happens to the cash register. 
It is. It, it, and that's the funny thing is that it sounds so, it's, but it's also proven for many, many, this is, this is marketing, whether it's online or offline or whatever it is, we're humans and we respond to this, which I think is really important, yeah. but it's way yeah. easier to sort of go through these five and it's harder, especially for a smaller business owner to n- not get swayed by the Facebook ads, new marketing thing or the whatever it is, right? Because we've got yep. a bazillion distractions and completely forget that you told us about this whole thing, right? So they'll yeah, get in well, their that's... Facebook ads thing and make something and be like, oh, wait, yeah, there was no call. To... I mean, hopefully my people have made a call to action at the end of theirs. But how, how can we make sure we're using and implementing this stuff in every type of, of advertising that we do? I think just ask yourself uh, a question. Um, and that original five-step system, I mean, I've absolutely overloaded everybody with five-step systems today. Uh, but the original one, identify your most profitable target audience, look for more people who look like them, create a wow factor to take their eyes off the price. Number three, problem solution. Number four, fix your website. Uh, and we can touch on what components that you need to do, uh, need to include in your homepage, if you like, in a moment. And then number uh, five, of course, collect data so you can stimulate repetitive trade. If you just ask yourself those questions every time you're about to launch an advertising campaign, um, you can't go wrong. Because if you say, well, is this being targeted? Is the language and the, and the imagery that I'm showing, whether it's Facebook or whether it's in a magazine, is the imagery and the message that I'm portraying here, I'll be communicating here, is it going to get the attention of my most profitable target audience? And if it's not, don't do it. Don't do it. Um, and so if you go through those five steps, do I have a wow factor? In other words, do I have an organic wow factor? I'm the only guy with the Rubik's Cube. Or do I have to put a, a bonus on top of that? I give two years interest free if they're buying a lounge suite or whatever it may be. And if you don't have a wow factor, have you know, make sure you have one. Um, and, and the thing that you know I, I find that is really interesting with a lot of business owners, Jamie, is that they've come up with a stupid name for their business. Um, it's just crazy. Mine is a wanky name. Okay, it's the Institute of wow.com. And of course, you know, I'm not an accountancy firm. Um, business I had before this was called the Dynamic Ideas Company. Again, it's a creative term. You know, I'm not an accountancy firm or a law firm. And yet there'll be so many people. I had a guy that came on board yesterday in my program, and he's come up with a name called Zealify, Z-E-A-L-I-F-Y. And I said to him, what do you do? He said, I provide uh, consultancy to hotels as in drinking, you know, bars and hotels. And I said, well, why did you call yourself Zealify? He said, I went to a branding expert. I went, oh, here we go. He went to a brand, and he spent $50,000 on compl- coming up with a completely stupid name. And I said to him, well, I, I just went on to one of the, you know, sort of net registries whilst I was talking to him on my Skype call. And I said to him, do you know that um, uh, hospitalityacademy.com is available? Because that's what he does. He teaches them Disney-style customer service for their hotels, right? And I said, what do you do? He said, I provide Disney-style customer service advice to the hospitality industry. I said, do you know that hospitalityacademy.com is available? And he said, you're calling me a dickhead, aren't you? I said, mate, you've got the, you've got the Academy Award. And you're like, now you owe me $50,000. Go. (laughs) (laughs) So therefore, if you're coming up with a name and people say to me, well, what should I call my business? I say, Toys R Us. You know, and they, they, that some of the idiots will say, oh, but I'm not a toy store. No, metaphor, okay? <laughs> I love that you insult them while you're doing it. I think that's great. It is funny. I just had a branding expert on the show a little bit ago, and he also said coin terms aren't nearly as good for small business. Like the people that have the money in the marketing, it's way easier uh, than it is otherwise. And I, I really appreciate that because way too many people spend way too much money on that sort of thing. So tell me before, because I know we have to start wrapping up in a minute. Tell me more about fixing your website. I'm a geek. I have a degree in computers. This speaks my language, especially on the direct response side. So tell somebody how they can fix their website because, again, you're right. Most of them are kind of janky. Yep. Okay. Okay. Number of components. Number one, they have to have a problem solution headline or a benefit driven headline. So some people will say, look, we just don't want to go down the problem solution path. Fine. Have a benefit driven headline. Uh, Okay. And uh, in my instance, for example, the headline on my website, I haven't looked at it in the last uh, few weeks, but I think it says something like, are you looking for killer uh, proven marketing system? that can uh, give you an avalanche of uh, of prospects. And that's what everyone's looking for. So that's a benefit-driven headline. Uh, And then so there's not just a silly headline without backup. Obviously, I've got backup. So number one, a uh, benefit-driven headline or problem-solution headline. Number two, you must, 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 must have uh, an explanatory video. 
in the day and age that we live in now where, you know, if you asked uh, 10 people if they prefer to watch a little two-minute video versus read reams of text, they'll tell you the two-minute video every time. But that video can't be Esme, Beryl uh, or Dorothy going, hello, welcome to my website. It can't be that. I, I would like to keep doing be- that. What do you mean? Hello? No, okay. <laughs> I just want to tell you that I set up this business in 1882. Oh, God. I was going to wear a bonnet. That's not good. Don't wear a bonnet. <laughs> Grand, Grandma Jamie. Yeah, yes. that was really sick. Yeah, so look, it's got to be interesting. And if you're not interesting, just wake up to yourself and admit that you're not interesting and get someone, a presenter, to do it for you. Or maybe a doodle video. Mm-hmm. You know, I when on my registration page, I have these um, these seminars, and, uh, and it might be worth it just giving you. Um, I don't think anyone's going to fly from America to Australia for my seminar, but you can have a look at this page. It's called explodeyoursales.com.au. Now that one has a .au at the end of it, which stands for Australia. So explodeyoursales.com.au. If you go on there, you'll notice that I took me off the welcome video and put a cartoon version of me. You know the the fast whiteboard animations, the doodle videos. Mm-hmm. Guess what? My registrations went up 31%. But they didn't want to see your face? What? Really pisses me off because the cartoon version of me did better than me, which really upsets me. But anyway, if I get 31% more people in the room, I'm happy. So think about that. Think about if maybe you can have an engaging video of either a presenter or maybe a cartoon. Uh, Number three, you need a data collection facility, which means you need to give away something for free and Jamie, you're all, you're all all over this, of course, because of the game that you're in. But whether it's a free report or a free video tutorial series or whatever it might be, give them something that they will then give you their name and contact details so that you can annoy them until they buy or die. Uh, and then the other thing that you need is video testimonials. Do not put them on your testimonial page. Nobody goes there. We've done the heat mapping. We know that. And so, therefore, choose your top two or three or four video testimonials and put them on your homepage. And then the other thing that you want to put on your homepage is the three biggest benefits that people will experience if they come and buy from you, whether it's your service or your product. And that just probably covers what you need on your homepage. You put that sort of stuff on your homepage, A, you'll keep them sticky because you've made your homepage compelling, and hopefully, B, that will encourage them then to go onto subpages. And, uh, you know, the crazy part about it, Jamie, is that 90% of the people who come into my environment don't even know what their bounce rate is. Huh, really? Huh. Yep. Usually it's probably pretty bad anyway. Not that any. Anyway, sometimes we have to explain what a bounce rate I'm a geek, so, but I've explained bounce rate quite a few times from a lot of people yeah. just in general. Though, and a lot of people actually, I mean, for, for us and people that create content, a lot of people are coming not on the homepage anyway, so now we have to pay attention to every single other page and where they go and the whole sequence, and it can get a little nutso. Can you explain to me, though, the three biggest benefits? Like, what is typical of the three biggest benefits that you want to make sure is there? Yeah, okay, so, so let's say it's an aging, an, an anti-aging cream, for argument's sake. Um, you're going to have your before and after photos throughout the homepage. If you, you know, you've got half a brain, that's what you would do. And so you might say the three biggest benefits is that number one, this is an organic product, and so there are not any chemicals and you know other sort of colourings in there. So therefore, you can feel um, very safe that this comes basically in an organic format. Number two, it actually reduces wrinkles within ten days or whatever it may be. You know, um, and 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 the fact of the matter is, is that you. I have got evidence of that on your website. And number three, in terms of the wrinkle cream, it may very well be that you are supporting um, a particular uh, foundation or charity uh, where a lot of the equipment, a lot of the ingredients of this cream are coming from the jungles of Africa or what have you, yeah. and you're looking after the communities there where you've actually cut down their trees and got whatever you have to get out of the tree. So, and I'm making that up yeah. on the spot, but the whole idea is, is to zero in on the top three big benefits rather than saying, oh, I'm going to give you, how many seminars, Jamie, have you been to where you want to kill yourself when the speaker says, I've got a 28-point system? And you go, oh, no. I don't, I don't make it that far usually and listening to somebody like that. <laughs> Yay. So, so three. Yep. And okay. yeah, in my instance, I'm, I'm going to show off here, but if you're going to be in business, you have to be different. So therefore, you've had quite a few guests on your program over the years, I'm sure. And they will tell you that they've just written their latest little book and I'll show you the how, whatever it might be. Um, we do things a bit differently. I'm going to have to come back from the camera here. <laughs> oh, so, yes, that's a little bit different, a little bit different. Re- <laughs> so this is, this is when people come to my seminars, I say to them, listen, if you want the last 20 years of all my best ideas, it comes in this tabloid-sized book, leather-bound, it's got the gold tip edges on it yeah. and the whole bit. Um, and immediately when you do something stupid like that, something silly like that, then you can't. Like this. <laughs> you, 
<laughs> you can see some of these people when they get it, they got it like that, and they go, oh, my God, then I've got to jump in a plane and go home with this. I said, well, no, you've got to sign a form because if you fall asleep in bed tonight watching, like reading this, there's a chance you'll break a rib, and I don't want to be sued, okay? Um, <laughs> So the reason at the end of our interview I thought I'd show off and throw that up there is because just look the, the thing I, the, the advice that I would give to anyone listening to to you know, your uh, you know podcast webinar whatever is hang around with some crazy people and uh, I think Jamie uh, you, you and I probably fall into that category because of what we do for a living anyway um, but hang around with people who say um, why not not people who say why. And uh, I'm not getting too mushy here because I'm not Anthony Robbins, but um, one of the things I find with most of the people that come into my environment that is holding them back is that they're hanging around morons. They're hanging around can't do people. You've got to hang around can do people. I agree a thousand percent. I moved from Maine because everybody around me was sort of that, ah, uh, and it and it feels like something on your shoulders, like holding you down, even though it's, you know, all mental, but it still makes a huge difference. I know we have to start wrapping up. So I want to ask the last question that I uh, told you about at the beginning when I was off my, I almost didn't tell him, which would have been your own fault, by the way, but <laughs> <laughs> I kind of wish I didn't now. All right. What's, <laughs> better be good. What's one action listeners can take this week to help move them forward towards their goal of a million okay okay uh i really do come back to that uh, formula okay i call that formula the wheel of wow because it's an easy thing just to draw a pizza pie and put those five pieces in it but the first piece of that pie identifying your most profitable customer and then looking for more people who look like him or her is absolutely the most important thing because you know you can do problem solution you can fix your website you can come up with the wow factor and all that sort of stuff none of that will count for anything if it's not based in the very first instance of being disciplined to identify your most profitable customer and then look for more people who look like him. And you know what? I would say more than 50% of businesses just don't do that. They, they have a broad idea of who their customer is. They'll say, oh, females. But no, you've got to drill down much further than that. And even oh, when I look I'll at give, Yeah, go ahead. I'll give you just one example. There's a guy who came on board not long ago, and he's a little country town in uh, Australia. And uh, he is a aluminium, or I think you guys pronounce it aluminium, uh, back fence um, producer. So he produces metal fences. And a lot of the people in his area are in older homes where they've got the older paling wooden fence falling over. So he put out his brochures, and it did nothing. And I could see why because the letterbox brochure was just awful he didn't do a very very good job on that and he came into my program and he said oh if only i could find the people who've got the falling down back fences he said because a lot of people who you know the husband might be a handyman where he's looked after it so he said i'm wasting my letterbox brochures in their letterbox but i can't go around checking everybody's backyards i said i think we can do that pretty easily we went to the radio station the local little country radio station and we offered them a five thousand dollar fence makeover which of course would only cost him next to nothing uh if they ran a contest which was called the ugliest back fence in australia contest and you had to take a photo of your ugly falling down back fence and post it to the radio station's website for the chance to win the makeover he had two years worth of leads within three days that is very, very smart. So while in general, you didn't like contests, that's genius. That makes perfect sense for something like that. Because it 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 makes your marketing, because we only have so much marketing dollars in general, and it makes them go like this. And I don't think most people think that way in general. Really, Look, really we, we, we've taken that to the next level now for kitchen renovators. We just do Facebook advertising for them now and Instagram, where we invite people to post the photo of their ugly kitchen that desperately needs a makeover and of course there's the chance for them to win that makeover these people are getting one or two years worth of leads within a, within a week um, because we're flushing out their most profitable customer which of course are people with bad kitchens so look there's, it's, if you know how to do this stuff it's relatively straightforward the, 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 but the first and foremost thing that someone has to do in their own business is identify who they make the most money out of and then look for more people like them I love that. Thank you so much. Where do we find more about you? Hopefully we can't order that huge book all the way to the States, but where, where can we get the rest of the information all about you and follow you online? Everything. Well, look, the, the, the huge book and all of that is available online, so therefore they can actually get the electronic version because these days, as you know, with our page flippers, it's just as easy to read it on your computer. Um, but yeah, thank you, Jamie, for giving me the opportunity to have a shameless plug um, the name of my business is the Institute of Wow. So it's just the Institute of wow.com. If you go on there, you'll, hold, you'll see a whole bunch of case studies. You can swipe ideas. And if you choose to you know, uh, contact me, then that's fine too. So the Institute of wow.com.
See, and did you see what he did there? He called it out that it's a shameless plug in advance. Oh, so now we don't think he's a skeezy anyway. I'm just saying he uses uh, his own stuff. Uh, I've been- <laughs> damn it, damn it, you're awake. I got you. Him. Darn it. I am a schemer after all. <laughs> well, and, by the, and by the way, Jamie, if you just run to the back of the room, you'll get some stuff <laughs> First 10 people get some steak knives. And then send me a video of you running to the back room, but only air now. <laughs> oh, and by the way, we only have 11 left. <laughs> people are going to email you and be like, but wait, I wanted it. I was so close. <laughs> Did I make it? Did I get it? <laughs> oh, thank goodness my audience is smarter than that. But I so appreciate you coming on, especially uh, early in the morning over in Australia. And uh, of course, let us know if you need anything. But thank you so much for taking the time to come on today. My pleasure, Jamie. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed that interview. And if you want to check out more amazing resources, I'm only curating the best of the best. Go check out eventualmillionaire.com. You can take the Eventual Millionaire quiz, figure out where you are in business and what you need right now. Plus, you can look at curated resources specifically for you on the new Start Here page. I'm so excited. Please join us. Please let me know if you need anything at all. I'm here for you. And have a fantastic day. Bye.